the touchdown, is that something that you have all season or is that something you see? Oh, that, we, yeah. we've actually had that for a long time and uh, we, we probably practiced it last year for a few weeks. Obviously Chase left-handed and then uh, that's a formation we've run on the goal line last year with a couple plays. He, I think Ebron scored out of it, you know, so we had it kind of worked up, worked it a couple weeks this year and felt like it was the time for it. Kenny talked after the game about you know, players needing to study more. Uh, you get rid of yourself. Uh, what's been your assessment of that? Is that something you share for yourself? We've got to play better, and whatever we have to do to do that, we, we, we cannot continue to make the mistakes that we've made and hurt ourselves. You know, I continue to stay, you know, until it's fixed. It's me, but it's uh, we, we've got you know, Kenny. Kenny had, was just, you know, he's speaking for himself. We got to play better. We can't. We got to get things off tape. We can't make the same mistakes over and over. And I think that's what he was probably speaking to. Is that one of those things where you guys have talked about needing more splash? And obviously, the defense is out there trying to keep you from having that splash. There's nobody keeping you from from getting lined upright and doing that kind of stuff, right? So is that something that should be easier to, to, to get a hold of? I, I think that's probably where, you know, we, we, we that's, that, that's, there's no excuse. It's unacceptable. And it, you know, we've got to address it more, do a better job. Whatever we got to do to let that happen, those are things that shouldn't be happening at any point, um, at any point, let alone this point in the season. So, yeah, we've got to correct it. We're working on it. we got to get it fixed. How much does that extra week help in terms of all of that, the corrections and fixing yeah, things? I think like, some of those things are fundamental things that really, you know, it's focus and talking about the extra week help. The extra week's good to assess where we are and to kind of look at what are, you know, things that have gone well and, and why those things that are a little bit off here and there haven't gone well. You know, why why have these plays that are you know, almost, you know, almost to take all, all these, none of that matters. So I think it's been good to look at that and kind of figure out why and, and, and get it better. Matt, when you guys have had opportunities to make big plays and have it come up, that would come up short, has it been more fundamentals, a lack of fundamentals and execution, or has it been more about you know lack of understanding the, the concept and the scheme, as how it applies to the defense that you're facing? Yeah, so I'm not gonna. Get, I mean, I think there's a multitude of reasons, right? I mean, obviously we can, we we in there we talk about why it is and being we gotta make sure we are direct and hear it and we get it fixed. So it's about a multitude of things. I, I know you know this comes with the territory. There's a lot of talk about speculation this time, bye weeks changes that may happen that may not happen if you had assurances that you'll still be in the same position I mean, i'm just working every day i feel feel pretty good about you know doing my job and getting this thing where we want it to be and getting it fixed that's what i'm doing so i'm not i'm not privy to those you know i commented last week i'm not naive my job is i call the plays and if they don't work everybody can talk about why they don't work so that's all I'm focusing on our players. We got to win some games. Is play calling that exclusive function right now for you, or, or, or is there a way to utilize other people involved with that, or has that been discussed? Um, no, we, we've got a system. We, we, we utilize everybody on our staff all the time. I mean, we're, we got coaches who are, their areas of expertise are used. Certain guys are in charge of third down, goal line, red zone. Um, so we're all working at that. We just have to find a way to get a little bit better and win some games. What's going to be the most important thing for Kenny to work on throughout this bye week? Well, just I think timing with his guys, timing, you know, fundamentals. Um, you know, he continuing to get that, that, you know, with the reps he hasn't been with. So um, just working through that, seeing it. You know, he's, he's getting better every day. He'll continue to work. Nobody's working harder than Kenny. What do you feel like is the thing that, that for him, you know, is maybe showing up like the way you expect it to and, and maybe what is like things that you think he can realistically improve I mean, everyone thinks like, oh the first round pick is gonna be great i, I think like, what are some realistic improvements well, that think, you think you could see i mean i think when he's, he's gonna improvement is getting taking mistakes off a of tape that occurred prior to that right obviously coach says it all the time great great play is seeing the mistakes before they happen not letting them happen Good plays when we see those things are good coaching. Okay, good or good way, either way, players or coaches. When we when it happens, we get off the so I think for Kenny, he I think there's been a lot of quarterbacks who've gotten drafted in the first round who've come in their first year and it's been maybe not quite as rosy as everybody hoped and it's turned out to be really good, right? So there's there's statistical data to that, but that doesn't make it okay right now. We're not all sitting here like, oh, it's fine, and he's not either. So we want him to get better every day, but we want that for everybody. Kenny is the quarterback; he's the focal point, but that's what we want for everybody. Is there a struggle to, you know, that, that he has to overcome as far as balancing week to week, you know, assignments to get used to a defense versus figuring himself out and how he plays in the NFL, adjusting to this speed? I'd have to speak to, you know, you have to speak to him. I don't, I mean, I think all those things for guys who play quarterback in the league, talk about the curve and figuring it out. And you, know, you go from one level to the next. And I think Kenny's doing a great job with that. He's made some tremendous plays throughout, you know, these four games he's, he's started. And, um, you know, we just got to, Keep pushing him and keep getting him right and 
keep getting everybody else around him better. We all got to be better. So obviously Kenny, you get all the credit and all the blame at quarterback. We understand that, but he's, he just has to keep getting better day at a time. Is there a longer term, having a rookie, I mean, you've talked about this in the past, but having a rookie quarterback in terms of a veteran, in terms of helping him develop in the way you guys are doing things or crafting things in terms of he can be better quarterback next year, five years on the road. Oh, no, I think right now we're just trying to win. I mean, I think obviously there's, there's, we're not going to do anything to hurt his future or anybody else's future. We're, we, you know, we're, we're all working for that and planning on that, you know, being a great time. We want it to be great right now. So no, there's nothing that way. I mean, I think we're certainly to the prior question about mistakes, like we're keeping things fairly simple so we get things right. So we certainly shouldn't be having mistakes if we're keeping it that simple, right? I think that's that's the that's the issue probably where you look at and say, why are we doing this? Why not more? Da da da. Well, we can't we can't make mistakes. We can't build more until we get the mistakes going. If that makes sense, so then it's you know it's kind of a, a circle you keep running around. So we're going to get that done. I think there's been a real point of emphasis. I think the players. Have, have taken hold of it and understand that you know there's no we can't continue to do this and they don't want to do it anymore and I I, I believe it every week but I believe it again I think we're going to finally you know get that stuff figured out and start playing well and start winning some games. Jalen's looked better on a week to week basis as a runner. Where have you seen the improvements from him, especially over these last couple of weeks? Jalen's just a you know he's just a fired up guy that comes in and works really really hard and does the things you want him to do and he's a football player. He's running good, protecting, catching the ball. He's a, so I don't know what I've seen. He's just. He's, since day one when he's got here, he's been pretty good. Why do you think he's having more success than Najee is right now? Uh, some of it's situational. Again, some, you know, we've, he's been in more third downs and some of those things. You know, the, with the way the picture is, the box, and some of those things are situational. And and also, you know, so how many players are in there to tackle you? If you're talking about you to say more successful like yards or whatever per carry, I think that's part of it. And, and I think obviously Najee's you know spoke about it, so I'm not speaking out of turn. I mean, he, Najee came out of camp and getting going and getting going. He's now getting himself back at full speed. So combination of both. But again, we've, they've been in different situations in the game. Do you have to have more success running the ball for this offense to work? Yes. We have to have more success doing everything for this offense to work. So, but yes, obviously we, we you know, our running game's got to be more efficient. We've got to stay on schedule. Um, you know, we got a little bit there last week. We had to throw it out a lot at the end. And you know, we, had, we were down two scores. Right before the fumble, that was you know that was a really critical situation. We go down and score there and make it a one-score game, everything's better. But we didn't do that. And then all of a sudden you're down two or three scores, and your your play you know it gets smaller because you've got to score more points to catch up. So yeah, but yes. A long answer, yes. Yeah, but we got to do everything better. We got to run the ball better, throw it better, do it all better. Matt, how tough is it just to fit game day? Last two. You know, calling plays. You know, putting that puzzle together on the field, or your Saints up in the in booth. On a, on a weekly basis of what works, what not, and fitting that puzzle, just a play calling groove, I guess. How difficult can that be? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, every every game's different. We got to get into a rhythm. I think the fun part about doing it is every game is different. You get, you know, this might be working. You thought it would, and this didn't think would be great, and it becomes a real hot thing. So you got to, you know, tweak around that. Take, you know, players, matchups. Thought this matchup was good, whether it was or not. So every game's different. I think that's part of it. And this is, we got a great staff of guys who all look and figure it out. We talk and you know see what's best to do. So. Is there anything you see specifically that's not happening in the running game? You know, I just I'm consistently talking to him about looking at here's what you see, tell me what you see, talking to it. He regurgitates that to me, and then he goes and operates on the field as he sees things and reacts. And, you know, that's the running back position. You know, you see color flash one way, you you make a decision on, uh, you know, where you run from that. And so those are always the conversations, whether he was, um, you know, rushing for 150 yards a game or, you know, if he's if, if they were struggling and everything in between. That's just the approach we're going to take to it, and um, that, that won't change. Eddie, how much of the conversation is trying to keep him from doing too much? Because you can understand if you know you look at the offense, it's not moving where you want it to, and he wants so good, so he, he wants so much to be good and for the offense to be good. How do you kind of work him through not doing too much? This is a constant conversation because you know the earlier question just leading off is like he wants to do well, he wants the team to do well. It means a lot to him. Nobody cares more than that dude, and. Um, so when that's the case, you know, you're always continuing to remind him, like, hey, man, we just need you to be yourself. We just need you to go do what Najee Harris is capable of doing and, and, and cleanse yourself of any other, anything else, any other baggage that you're toting. And um, that's always my communication to him. It's been like that for two years. He's taking this stuff to heart. 
every week. I mean, Absolutely. Because um, he cares. About, you're worried about where he is after some of these losses, particularly last Sunday. I, I'm constantly, you know, when you develop relationships with your guys, you care about them as humans and people, and you want them to, you know, you want to talk them through issues that they're having. And so that's always the conversation. Again, whether we were sitting here undefeated or, you know, with our current record, that's always going to be my approach in, in dealing with it. And when you're dealing with somebody like Najee who cares so much, then, yeah, obviously you're going to have those conversations because he's frustrated um, as everybody. You know, he wants to do well. He wants us to win. And so those are our conversations. And, and um, that's not going to change, you know, regardless of, of what the scenario may be or the circumstance for our team. There are times he seems like he might be a little tentative in some situations. Does that have anything to do with the foot and taking a while to get back? Or is that just something maybe in his mind he needs to work? I don't think so. I think, I think he's, um, you know, I don't think it's a foot's the issue. He said after the game, Sonny, I can't make the hole. Um, is that a bad place for him to be? I mean, I think, you know, maybe he's uh, ver uh, versing some frustrations in that. Um, but, um, you know, it's right after a game and it's, you know, it's intense and sometimes you have those reactions. But, you know, we're, we're just going to keep moving, you know, business as usual in terms of the things we do and believe in and trust in and hang, in our, hang our hat on. And I'm not going to act funny because it's not going exactly like we want. You know what I mean? I'm going to be real consistent. I'm going to stay real steady with him. He knows that. Um, and, you know, things are, things are turn. And I believe that, and that's how I'm going to go about the bit of my business. If you, Do you look know at the, the raw numbers you know, between Jalen and him, yards per carry, what additional contact needs to be considered when you look at the, the, the discrepancy between those two backs? They're just two different runners. And I think something, you know, as good as Jalen is, and I, I really like Jalen's development and where he's at, you know, circumstance in the game also dictates some of that stuff, you know. Um, you, know it's la you know, we're late in the game last week, and we're driving, and he's getting a couple draws, and he's got space to run. They're playing too high, and, you know, it, and it, there's going to be creases in there um, versus, like, sometimes in the game where there's, uh, it's not as clean or it's not, you know, they're playing one high type defenses or loading the boxes then, you know, Najee's running into a lot of those things sometimes. So I think you got to just consider all of it. But, um, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, – I'm, I'm taking their both for the production that it is and what they bring to our team. And I'm not sitting here comparing and going like, well, you did this and he didn't do that. I'm just going to – I'm going to take it all in. I'm going to coach them the same and, and um, you know, see where it goes from there. Along those lines, I mean, are defenses noticeably playing the two differently just in how, you know, is Najee seeing more stacked boxes, Jalen lighter boxes? I'm not, I'm not, I don't necessarily think it's based on the player. I think it's just more based on the circumstance of the game when, when, when things like that happen. But again, I'm just going to coach them both up. And I think, you know, a year ago it was getting somebody to spell Najee and taking the load off of him. And I think we found that guy. So I'm excited about that part. And so I coached them both up in the, in, in, from that with that in mind, and um, go ahead. So, and I'm just excited about that, really. Uh, along those lines, are you do you feel like Jalen has earned maybe more looks or more options in this offense? And I think Jalen, you know, I came into it saying, you know, if he was playing anywhere from a 30% clip in the game plus that, um, it'd be good. And I think about every game we've about hit that. And so, um, does he? The I think that. Jalen's playing good, and based on what's going out on the field in terms of if Najee needs a blow or if um, Jalen's giving us a spark or whatever, we'll, we'll make decisions on who's in and out the game based on that. But, um, you know, again, I feel I just feel really good about having a guy that you feel really good about putting in those circumstances that you feel like you can get production out of. From your perspective, just as someone who's worked with Najee for two years, do you notice him doing more east-west running instead of you know putting his head down and going north to south? Are those conversations that you're having with him when you're breaking down film after the game? We're constantly having conversations about every single play on there, and if and if there's a game, uh, play where he should have got vertical, I tell him that. If there's a play where um, you know whatever it may be, you know I'm going to critique it by play by play. Do you think is that be him trying to do too much? I mean, he's talked to us about that. But he needs to trust the line on things like that. I think that's yeah. accurate. I think I think, you know, you know, if he's saying it, you know what I mean, that's how he's feeling about it. And so I would say, you know, it, it, it's always coming from a good place with Najee. Najee wants to win, he wants to do well, he wants he wants to do whatever he can to help our team and, and those are the conversations. I know the outside criticism obviously is something that everyone's trying to keep shut out, but do you think that Najee can be a magnet for more of that because of his stature as a first round back as a team captain, those kind of things? Of course, but that comes with it. And I just tell him like just that, you know, it comes with it, man, you gotta shut out that noise and go play. You know, and 
And um, that's that's been the conversation before any of this, before anything, before the season when he showed up. Like, you know, that's just part of what comes with being RB1 and, and um, obviously being Najee Harris. And so I think he understands that and, and um, we'll continue to push through and grow. He's so firmly entrenched as RB1. Yes. In the, in the second half of the season, are there things specifically in terms of the types of runs or the ways that he approaches these runs you think will help unlock his potential? I mean, you know, Najee's run, last year he had 400 and some touches. He's run every run that you could run, you know, really in, a, in an offense. And so to sit here and act like he doesn't read that or he don't see that, this and that, I know he can, you know, and I know he does. So um, I don't feel like there's a, there's a group of runs he can or can't do. I just think it's the body of work and looking at each play for what it is. Um, not predetermining things and, and, and taking what the defense gives you and, and not doing too much and reacting from there. How do you keep him from getting too down on himself in these situations? I think you just got to have a relationship just like you would with any any other person, you know what I mean? And and constantly when you see signs of maybe him carrying some baggage, talking to him and, and, and letting him know just kind of where things are at. And, um, and we have those conversations. But again, we've been having those conversations from the beginning. So that baggage he carries, is that because of just where the offense is in general, him going into his second year? I mean, what do you notice different about the baggage from year one to year two? He just wants to win. You know what I mean? And he's he was just he was the same way last year when we hit our strikes. Like he wants to win, he wants to do everything he can. Um, and you know, and he, he carries that, that's heavy on his heart. And so um, I think that's what you see when you when you when you when you ask those questions and see that, like that's what you see, a guy who really, really cares. As somebody who studies this position from every angle, um, is there anything to the difficulty in transitioning for an Alabama running back specifically? Or even I guess somebody from who comes from a big school where Maybe you've won a lot of games pretty easily. A lot of holes are there at the college level. Is that a real thing, or is that more just an outside idea? Um, I think the part you just said about, um, you know, not being used to losing games okay. yeah. may pertain to it. But as far as um, the transition from college to pro, I mean, if anything, he's more up to speed on that coming from a school like Alabama. He was used last more one. in the passing game last year. Seemed like I'm sorry, say again. He was used more, it seemed like, in the passing game last year, especially when he flanked out. Uh, is that something you guys can maybe do more of to maybe help him get going in general and get some touches? I mean, you know, we go into each game and put the best plan together, we think, to take advantage of matchups and stuff like that. And if um, that looks like something we can take advantage of for sure. Um, I think what Jalen offers as a protector and, and stuff like that is, is awesome. And, and, it, and it provides the ability for to give Najee built in blows, um, you know, in some circumstances in the game. So um, that's a good thing. Um, but as far as taking advantage of, of looks and stuff like that, that's always something we're looking at, and he's capable of doing it. The, uh, the formations and the downfield stuff, when they first started happening, I think Coach Solomon even said, we won't change anything, or like we think we're doing it right, or, or just calling it. it, it well, it, we obviously, it, we obviously right. have a, uh, a, 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 we also have a bull, obviously have a bullseye on our, on our back with that, so. Um, you know, we, we obviously we have to we have to do something differently. It's not you know we're, we're, those are like RPO type kind of plays where we're hitting combinations. We're you know we're hitting the combinations. We're even slowing our combinations down, trying to get up to the linebackers quickly. So we have the bullseye on our back. We have to change. We have to do something differently in terms of of doing that stuff. It's not you know I'm not putting that on the on the guys at all. Putting that on on, on me and, and, the, and the coaches really for that for the you know pre snap penalties stuff like that. That's on them. That stuff's on that. Those type of things when we're downfield, it's either we either we either need to get the ball out a little bit quicker or change up what we're doing. Um, I, I kind of got the end there. I was going to ask about Dan and hmm? how he's progressing, so you might have to repeat. Yourself. No, you're fine. I, uh, again, I think just studying it and seeing Dan from uh, you know watching him from, like from last year and comparing it, and even when when I got here and from uh, training camp, I think it's uh, night and day difference. Um, he obviously he plays one of the harder positions uh, you know in this in the sport of football playing that left tackle and being on that open end i think his ceiling is high i think he's going to progress you get get better each each and every week um just the tempo of his feet his sets you know the way he's throwing his hands now which he never did before in the past i think he's improved does he have uh, more room to improve heck yeah he does he's a young kid he's a second year guy playing a playing a position like that he has to improve and he's working at it and Sitting in there watching them right now, work at it right now, um, doing it. So yes, he he will improve. But I've I've seen a huge, huge improvement over Dan over the course of 
what do you want to call six, seven, eight months? Where's Kendrick's mindset? Is he receptive to, I mean, he's had a rough... Yeah, yeah he's obviously, he's a, he's a pro that wants to, obviously he wants to be in there and, and the, you know, the one, one thing that we've been fortunate as a, the five that we've started, we've had the five in there the whole time and we haven't had, we haven't had the injury bug to where, you know, it's been an issue to, um, you know, having to move different pieces in and out of the puzzle. So, uh, he, I, you know, I talked to him about walking out to practice today, and it's just like I'm like, here's what we got to get better on. Here's what you got to work at. You got to work at this individual thing and uh, here, uh, this in individual technique. So no, he's, it's not like his, it's not like he's he's got his head down. And he's not working. He's working to to get better. It's just you know, we we got the five out there right now. That's our five, and we're going to continue to run with this five right now until. Yeah, you know, until, until something happens, and then we'll move on from there. But no, he's he's been working. I apologize because this has been asked already. But how do, when you guys bring up pre-snap penalties and go over things in the film, how do you see you guys your your room respond? They put it on them. If it's pre-snap, it's on them. When how have you seen them respond? Well, there's the coach is on me. It's on me. I can't, can't have that. You know, if it's a pre-snap, which I don't know. I don't know. That, that number wise, I don't know how many we've had pre-snap. We've had more yeah, procedural law as well. Yeah, we've had more in terms of like. You know, being downfield and that type of stuff. It's you know, it's again, if it's pre-snap and doing stuff like that, it's on, it's it's on, it's on them. If we call the call the formation and we get we get out there and they're, they're jumping off sides or we're not lined up correctly, that's that's on the play. And they they own up to it. They've been great with that. They own up to it.